So you've built a fancy web app and it's time to take it global. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In this episode, Dave is going to take us through <gasps> internationalization. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Or you have to take a deep breath there because that is a heck of a long word. I-18N. So, yes, is it as complicated as the word itself would make you believe? I hope not. Uh, I guess it depends. If, if you... If you're a big company like Microsoft, and that's the page I have here is on the website where you choose your locale, and you support this many, then it's probably at least as complicated as saying the word. But we're going to start a little easier. We're going to do just, uh, since we're in Canada, English and French Canadian. So we should, we should clarify that, that French Canadian is like a completely different language from French. Like Quebecois French and Parisian French. This is true. Language, and we're admitting that up front. So if you're in Paris, really anywhere in France or Belgium or like anywhere else European, yeah. please don't be angry with us. This is like legitimately how we talk French here. Yeah. <laughs> Our inability to speak proper French aside, which I suppose we also apparently don't speak proper English according to Simon, so I suppose we're at least consistent, if nothing else. Pretty close. Um, but I'm going to split this over a series of episodes because it's a fairly big topic. And what I wanted to focus on today was specifically uh, getting your app ready for the translation piece. So uh, if, if you're going to translate the application into multiple languages, you can't just have hard-coded strings everywhere randomly in your app, right? Uh, those need to be extracted into resource files is kind of the, the approach for .NET. And that's always been the approach in .NET is that uh, your string resources get extracted into resource files, and it's those resource files that get translated. Uh, so you would have a set of resource files for your default language, which might be English, and then a set of resource files for French, a set of resource files for maybe French Canadian versus France. French, which, as we've said, is very different. Um, and that approach hasn't really changed with um, ASP.NET Core. What's changed is that w the ASP.NET Core libraries have added some services that kind of make it a little bit easier to work with these things. So we're not working with the resource manager directly. Uh, what we're doing is, uh, depending on where these strings are, we'll start with an example here where we have a string in our controller that eventually gets displayed to the user, so it needs to be extracted into a resource file. And what we, what they've done with ASP.NET Core is they have this idea of a string localizer that you would use in these instances. And it's part of dependency injection, just like any other service in ASP.NET Core, so we can simply inject an instance of the iString localizer, and we give it the type, so we're saying strings for the home, home controller. Just pass that in, and then we can use it, and all it is is it actually string localizer has uh, a get string method where you pass in a key, and from that key it will give you uh, essentially the translated version for your current culture that you have set for the app for the the request. So here, this is the thing that's a little bit different in that. You'll notice here I just, all I did was I put the English text in there. So by doing that, what I'm saying is that English is essentially my default language, and if I haven't, spec if I haven't created resource files yet for other languages, it will just default to this language. So I don't need to create resource files right off the bat just to get started with this. I can simply use, I can pass in as the key my in this case, English text, and if it doesn't find that key in the resource file, it will just return that value for me. So we kind of get our default language resource file for free without having to go through and create it. Because that was always a, the kind of the initial barrier was that you had to go and create these resource files for that first language. Now you don't need to do that to get started. So you can get your app ready for localization without going through all that effort of creating the resource files before you get started. So would you recommend just like doing this by default, even if you don't think your app is never going to need to be localized? Like, is the, the barrier of entry low enough that you could get away with that? I think you could, but 
like if you're doing an enterprise app and you know that it's your company is only English or whatever language, I, I wouldn't go through the effort at that point because you're 99% confident that you're never going to need to translate the app. But you know, if, if you're pretty sure that down the line, if this project goes well, that you think you're going to be doing this, then yeah, do it because it's it's not that hard to do, right? There's also there's also probably like a, a question of known boundaries. Use like in, when you're inside an organization in Canada, and maybe you're doing work for the government in Canada. We've got two official languages. You're going. It's not a question of if you're going to do localization. You're going to need to have at least those two languages supported inside That's the application. True. And if you're in Europe, then you know. For, I mean, the, you're never really. You know, never really have. Uh, more than a fraction of the population of the entire trading sp sphere that's over there. So it's probably a wise decision to build that out. And as far as people in North America go, you know, we've, we've got the same population as Europe and Europe and North America combined aren't as big as China. So you're cutting out a lot of market if you're not mm -hmm. doing this from the start. Yep. I think the the big exception is just internal line of business apps. That's, Absolutely. That's the place where you probably don't need to think about this too much. Um, but so the way the string localizer works then is that when you call that, it checks for a resource file for the current culture, whatever the current culture is set to. And it just kind of uses a naming convention for that. So under resources, there's a folder here called resources where I've configured it to look for resource files. And in this case, uh, it goes by, so the con it's a convention here and it's whatever our default namespace is, so in this case localization sample. We strip that off of the namespace and then take the rest of the fully qualified name of the the class. So we said home controller, which is localization sample dot controller is dot home controller. So when we strip out the localization sample part, we're left with controllers dot home controller and then dot the culture name dot resx. So that's how it looks for the resource files for the current culture. The resource file itself is simply, you know, the a key value pair, right? So in this case, the name is our English version, and the value is the French version. So that's all there is to that. And if we look at how we configure this at startup, we tell it, it doesn't quite fit on the screen. Services.add localization, add localization under configure services. And we just tell it the path to look for resources. So that's where I've configured it to say look in the resources folder. And there's there's other options there. Can we assume that there's a convention that you could override as well? That's a good question, actually. I'm not sure. So maybe that's something that we can explore for uh, can explore discovery. Now. For, yeah. OK, we can do that too. Options dot. Uh, not here, no. Not here. Okay, maybe there's some other yeah. uh, way to uh, to make that happen. Okay, cool. So uh, the other two pieces here that we're going to... Actually, we'll ignore this one because we're not going to use that in this sample. Uh, but the other part is view localization. So we're going to look at that next. But add view localization, and we're telling it here there is a bit of a convention where we can override or at least give a couple different options. And that's the localization or location expander format. So we'll look at that in a second. Uh, the next piece is under conf in our configure method. We need to tell the localization services uh, or middleware because it's middleware that's actually intercepting this and kind of setting up the resource manager the way it needs to be to support this. We tell it first what are the supporting cultures. So in this case, we've said fr-ca, that's French, Canadian, and then a default, just French, and then enca, which is English, Canadian, and English. So in .NET, culture info, that's something that's always existed since the beginning of .NET. This is called a specific culture, so it's French for a particular region, and then where it's just fr, that's what they call a generic culture, uh, where we haven't specified a region. Now reason that's important is that we can kind of fall through so we can have a set of resource files that's for French in general and then a, 
a set of resource files that's for French Canadian where we only override certain things. So it will start by looking for French Canadian versions if our current culture is French Canadian. It will look for the French Canadian values and if it doesn't find specific French Canadian ones it will de it will fall back to just the French one. Next up, we set up the... That's a really good way to add that regionalization and, and whatnot, because even inside France, there's different, in different parts of the mm -hmm. country, they would refer to things differently. So I don't know how many different regions they, or how specific it gets inside France, but certainly there's, sure. you know, Switzerland versus the French used in Belgium and Canada, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then we specify use localization. This is where we actually wire up those supported cultures. So there's a the concept of supported cultures versus supported UI cultures and then a default request culture. Um, and then a little bit that we're going to ignore and talk about in, a in our next episode. But all I'm doing is at startup, then I'm going to set a default request culture just so that we can see how this works. We can see it pulling values from the different uh, resource files. So we'll just start, we'll run it here in English mode. And we'll see that. We should get our English values as we expect. So your application description page, that's coming from the home controller. And now if we change this to this default request culture to French Canadian, we can see that it's pulled the application description piece here from that right. resource file. So, success. You'll also notice right that there are a few other things here that, that that also translated. So those were defined in the view, and that's part of the view localization piece. So let's take a look at how, how we did that. Over in our view, because typically this is where your strings are going to be, right? They're in the view. They're just kind of part of your markup uh, where you have all your text. So. What we've done is we've injected something called the I view localizer. So this is using view injection, which I think we've talked about before in a previous or view service injection. We've talked about that in a previous episode. Uh, but it, once it's injected, it basically works the same way as a string localizer. We just give it a key and it will go and look up from a resource file. And if it's not found, it will default to the value that you passed in. So here we had our title, which we set as home page and the welcome piece, which is that heading. Now, this is where I demonstrate that fallback mechanism. So again, there's a naming convention here with how it looks up resource files. So in this case, it's views.home, so kind of matching the folder pattern here. So views.home.index, and then your culture. So what I did is I split this up into two places. So the default, the generic culture was that's where I define the translation for welcome to bienvenue. And in the French Canadian one is where I change the title, the home page, to apparently what home translates to according to. Uh, I'm disappointed you're not making a pronunciation attempt here. <laughs> My French is so rusty. Okay. Okay, yeah. Or maison, which is definitely not the right version of home to use in this context. <laughs> But, Feuille de maison. <laughs> <laughs> so when we ran this, uh, we already saw how it, it pulled those values from two different places, right? So it pulled the, we had welcome, which came from the generic culture, and my title up here for home that came from the specific culture. So you can kind of see that fallback happening. There's one other piece here, and that was related to, I'm going to go back to the startup because... I guess I'm already there. So when we added our view localization and we said language view location expander format suffix. Now this is an, uh, it's a completely different option here, but what you can do is you can actually create an entirely new view page that's specific to that culture. So all I've done- Rather than using the tag helper there that you've got, or the service, I guess. The actually, service, sorry. yeah. Right service, yeah. This means redefining your view entirely for each culture, so it's not necessarily the best approach, but it is kind of interesting and it's something that you can kind of mix and match, right? Like you might use it sometimes, not all the time. But you'll see now because we're set to French Canadian, it should pull in this 
version here that says we me. No. That's interesting. That's something to think about. But I mean, I think like without diving too deeply into it, I think I would favor view service injection. I th so I, I can totally picture using a mixture of this. So in general, use service injection. I think that's use the view lo iView localizer. That'll be your best bet. But I could see having a small partial somewhere where there's something specific that you need to do for a certain country that doesn't apply to other countries. Yeah, like there's certainly for, some like legitimate things that you would want to do differently depending on the the culture settings that people had. Yeah, and I'm I'm specifically thinking about like if you were a bank, how you would lay out the information would be very different from mm -hmm. certain cultures where loans are not uh, necessarily the same as the loans that we would get here. Yep. Yeah. So I I, I see this as being, you know, you you. The default approach is you use the yeah, view, view localizer, which allows you to do the translations and share your view across all of those versions of your app. But as you said, there, there are definitely some situations where you might need to override the view. Maybe it's just a small portion of the view, or it might be an entire page. But this gives you a lot of flexibility, I think. So that, that's kind of an overview of the string localization pieces, and whether the strings are coming from your controllers or services, or if it's coming from your your views, use the iView localizer, iString localizer. And what we'll talk about in next episode that we, we tackle internationalization is more about this piece that I said ignore and we'll talk about it next time, is the request culture providers. So how do we specify for each request that comes in what the culture is for that request? So we'll look at that next time. Wonderful, thanks a lot for doing this, Dave. Yeah, very interesting. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, we hope to see you next time on the SPNF Monsters. In the meantime, remember to like, comment, and share our videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them either in the comments below or send us an email. And if you do so, we will read your questions on air and send you perhaps a fabulous laptop performance improving sticker which will add many megahertz to your laptops. At least, at least uh, part of a megahertz. For sure. Fractional, <laughs> fractional performance improvement. Yeah, empirically proven. <laughs> so, okay. Thanks, bye, everyone. Everybody. Cheers. Bye.